This SciShow video is supported by Shopify, an e-commerce platform that helps you start, grow, and manage your business. Head to shopify.com scishow to learn more and for a 14-day free trial. In the 1940s, during World War II, British and American scientists invented revolutionary new machines that could calculate artillery ranges and decrypt coded messages. These were the world's first computers, and they paved the way for our modern computers and the Internet age. But if history had gone differently, the first general-purpose computer could have been built a century earlier, all the way back in the 1800s. Back then, scientific information was often stored in large reference tables, which had lots of important purposes. For instance, they held data about the positions of the stars and planets which sailors used to navigate at sea. Unfortunately, making these tables was tedious and prone to errors because it relied on people literally just working out equations by hand. So in 1821, the young British scientist Charles Babbage thought there had to be a better way. He started thinking about how a machine might take over the tedious job of calculations, and in 1823, he received a government grant to give it a try. He set out to design a machine that could calculate these tables automatically, churning out data on things like the position of the sun every day of the year. Almost a decade later, he had a finished prototype. It was stupendously complex. The machine had over 20,000 parts and was based on gears and cogs that had to be cranked by hand. He called his invention the difference engine, because it used a mathematical method called finite differences to calculate the numbers. And it worked remarkably well, although not quite at the scale Babbage had originally imagined. In fact, it still works! It now lives in the Science Museum in London. But Babbage never finished the full difference engine because he got sidetracked by a much more ambitious idea. During the years that he worked on the engine, he realized that by modifying the design, he could create a machine hugely more powerful. He called this new idea the analytical engine, and it was essentially a steam-powered Victorian computer. It involved one critical upgrade from the difference engine, which could only do basic arithmetic. It would do those same calculations, then take the outputs and feed them into new calculations. Babbage called this eating its own tail. This feature would have let the analytical engine do any computation, making it a general-purpose computer, just like our modern computers. And Babbage is thought to be the first person to ever come up with this concept. The engine would have worked off of mechanical wheels and steam power. It had four parts. There was a reader to accept inputs in the form of punch cards, a printer to write the results, and two parts that were essentially like a CPU and a hard drive. The problem was, by this point, Babbage had strayed from his interest in making tables. Now he was more interested in machines kind of for their own sake. So when he asked asked the British government for more money to build the analytical engine in 1834, they said no. He self-funded work on the engines for the rest of his life, but never finished designing or making the analytical engine. In fact, the entire concept might have just vanished into the void of history if it hadn't been for another brilliant mind from the same era. In 1842, Babbage needed a French article about the analytical engine translated into English, so he asked for help from an old acquaintance, the Countess Ada Lovelace. Ada was a talented mathematician, and by 1842, she had been following Babbage's work for a decade. More than anyone, she understood the incredible potential of the engine. So when she wrote the translation, she appended a bunch of extra notes. Notes that ended up being three times the length of the original article. Those notes are now famous because they contained a list of instructions you could put on punch cards to make the engine compute a tricky mathematical formula. In a sense, this was the first ever computer program. Today, we know that the analytical engine was an incredible concept for its time, with impressive similarities to the computers that would arise in the future. It would have been able to do any computation that a modern computer can do. Just a lot slower. It also would have accepted its programming as punch cards, which is actually how the first electronic computers worked, too. Sadly, Babbage and Lovelace's work went unappreciated in their lifetimes. But in the 1930s, the Harvard engineer Howard Aiken stumbled across one of Babbage's prototypes in the attic of his own department. And that inspired him to finish what Babbage had started. Aiken's machine, the Harvard Mark I, was the first fully automatic computer. But it wasn't fully electronic and only barely programmable. Like, it could only store 72 
two numbers at a time in its memory, and it could only solve three addition or subtraction problems each second. It wasn't until the 1940s, when British and American scientists started developing technology for the war, that the first programmable electronic general-purpose computers were invented. In the years since, Babbage and Lovelace's ideas have been rediscovered. In 1991, the Science Museum in London built Babbage's full, final design for the difference engine, and it worked. So now, many recognize Babbage as the father of the computer, and Lovelace as the first programmer. It's a little hard to envision a world where they succeeded, a world with a hundred extra years of computer research and a version of the 1800s with steampunk computers. It's one of the big what-ifs of science history. But the story of Babbage and Lovelace shows how the history of science is messy and bumpy. Sometimes great ideas get lost, or happen before their time. But also, people everywhere are always coming up with brilliant creative solutions to the problems at hand, and that keeps driving science forward even as some ideas fall through the cracks. One of today's creative solutions to help your online business grow is Shopify. Shopify is an e-commerce platform that makes it easy for you to sell all of your business's awesome stuff. I've been running a store on Shopify for over 10 years now, and they've been with us through that entire process from going from a company with, like, two people to a company with over 50. Their new money management account, called Shopify Balance, lets you keep track of your Shopify store income without opening a separate business bank account. With Shopify Balance, you can access your money the next day, which is up to four days faster than traditional banking. It's a way to keep all your business stuff in one place with no monthly or hidden fees. In fact, you can earn 2% cash back when you spend on marketing, shipping, and growing your business with Shopify, and 10% cash back when you hire Shopify experts to help build or level up your store so you can make even more money. To check out Shopify, head to shopify.com slash scishow. If you use our link, you'll get a 14-day free trial. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow, and thanks to Shopify for supporting it. 